What is up guys, Charlene FX here back with another YouTube banger. Um, in this video, we're gonna be talking about support and resistance and how to look at the charts in a completely different way by using support and resistance in a uh, profitable way for you to be able to break down your charts properly and be able to become a savage at trading. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about my course, which is Simple FX Academy. A lot of you may know that. The link is in the description box below. Uh, in my course, I definitely go over how to trade uh, using strictly price action, no indicators, no none of that. And I teach you how to look at the markets in a completely different way. I break down charts from beginning to end for you. Begin, it's good for beginners. It's good for intermediate and beyond. So if you like my videos, if you like how I trade, if you want to learn from me and see how I'm able to murder these markets every single day, go ahead and do yourself a favor. Click on that link below and um, check out my course, okay? So uh, enough with that. Let's get into the video. Let's jump right into it, okay? So we're going to talk about support and resistance today, okay? Support and resistance is probably the most important aspect when it comes to trading because you cannot trade without support and resistance. Support and resistance is going to tell you where the market is going to react from, when you can expect the market to react, how it's going to react at a certain level, and what you can expect from price when it hits a certain price point. Now, as a lot of you know, uh, I trade GBP pairs. So in um, on this video, we're going to be mostly going over like GJ, GA, stuff like that. I might stick with GA for now. Uh, because it's, it's one of my favorite, it's become one of my favorite pairs aside from GJ, but we're going to go over exactly what support and resistance is, how you're able to use it and use it properly for you to be able to properly um, come up with a, a trade idea and break down your charts um, accurately so you have a, a, a better idea of what the market is going to do. Now, what is support and resistance? Support and resistance in, in, in layman terms basically is a, so you can think of it resistance as a ceiling and support more as a floor. Okay, when price hits a resistance, which it hits like a level that it can't break, like a ceiling that it can't break, it's basically telling you, hey, price is having a hard time breaking this area. It's resisting passing that area. So it's more than likely going to continue trying to break through or it's probably going to reverse. When it reverses, what is it going to uh, what is it going to come to when it reverses? More than likely, it's going to hit some sort of support. When you think about support, you got to think of like a floor, you know, something to support price for it to continue where it's going. If you're looking for buys, you want to be looking for supports to be formed. And if you're looking at sales, you want to be looking for resistance areas to be formed. I go into a lot more detail with that in my course, but that's a different video for a different day. This right here, we're going to talk about the basics of support and resistance and how to properly map out the important areas of support and resistance. Now, looking at support and resistance, looking at this chart here, uh, let me take this off so we can uh, have a clean, clean chart here, okay? Um, so basically with support and resistance, it tells you market structure. It tells you where price is reacting from, what your trend is mo more than likely going to be. It's telling you, hey, price has reacted to certain areas in the market, and this is what you need to be paying attention to. So for uh, example's sake, let's go down to the four-hour time frame. Now, these levels that you see here on my chart, they're called uh, quarter points, okay? Quarter points, psychological support and resistance areas. There's, you know, key levels. There's a million different names for them. But at the very, you know, at the very least, they're just uh, important price levels that the banks and the institutions trade off of. Okay, I am. I'm probably gonna make a YouTube video about that also, but that is also explained in my course. So if you want to know more about quarter points and how to use them profitably for your trading, go ahead and get the course. Okay. So for now, um, just ignore these lines for now. And actually, you know what? Let's look at a pair that doesn't have the lines on them. That way. Um, we, we're not confused and we're not looking at, you know, something that, you know, I don't want you guys to get confused basically with the, with the lines that are on my chart. So that we'll look at a different pair that I know doesn't have the lines on them. Okay. So let's look at odd, an odd pair here. Okay. And right now it's 438. The market is about to close. So it shouldn't be moving much at all right now. Okay. So looking at this, uh, chart right here, if we look at market structure here, What's our trend? You know, what do we really have here? Well, first thing you want to do when you look at market is identify what your trend is and then start marking off your support and resistance levels. Now, I'm going to have this list here and marking off my support and resistance levels with my horizontal rate. Basically, your 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 resistance levels are always going to be more at the top and your support is always going to be more at the bottom. Okay, it makes sense for it to be that way. Now, what do you want to look for when looking for support and resistance? You want to look for where price had the most reaction at a certain price point. Now, if I look here, I see price reacted here, price reacted here, reacted over here, here, and over here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put a line right here, and I'm going to label this more a resistance. Why? Because it's at the top. However, if we go up here, we'll see price also reacted up here 
also, okay, we have a, a resistance that was formed up here. All right, and keep in mind we're on the daily time frame right now. So we're gonna keep these examples on the daily time frame, okay? Now we're looking for support, same deal. We wanna look for the same levels where price reacted from, same for support, okay? Price reacted here, reacted here, all these rejection areas down here price reacted from. So I might wanna put one here. Now you're probably asking, well, Charlene, you know, how do you know exactly where to put it? You have different reactions at different areas. You wanna put your levels at an average of where the most reactions are, right? You don't want to put it somewhere where you have, you know, one or two reactions because that, that may not be an important price because price didn't react that much at that level. But if you have a price point here where price reacted, you know, over here and price reacted um, down here, price reacted over here, price reacted over here, this whole area right here, we have a whole bunch of you know, action. We have a bunch of reaction in this area. We have price bouncing up and down. We don't know really who's in power here because buyers and sellers were kind of going at each other. So in this area here, we had somewhat of a range right up here, right? So if price was in here, let's say we didn't know what happened here, we wouldn't know where price is going right now. It is making higher highs and higher lows, but price can always come down, can always break up. In this case, it break it broke up but it can always break down also. So you want to prepare your trade to go in either direction. That means being fluid in the market. That means being fluid with your trades, understanding that the market conditions are always changing and you have to be ready for whatever the market does. How do you prepare yourself for that is knowing what price market, what level price wants to get to for price to react at that at a certain level. Okay, so going down some more, let's try to bring this in some more so we can mark off some more areas here. And if you look here, I can I can bring this far back into the future, going far left. And if you look here, you'll see where my you know support and resistance line is. I had more reaction, more reaction, boom, 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 boom. All these reactions tell me this is an important price level. If I wanted to put another line somewhere, I would put it more hmm, down here, right? Now, what makes a support? What makes a resistance? A support is always at the bottom, resistance always at the top. I already said that. Now. When you have a level that was once a support level and it becomes broken, it now becomes you know a resistance. You have a, a, a support and resistance level doesn't always mean it's gonna stay a support and resistance level. Price is bouncing up and down. So it can be support, it can be resistance one minute, it can be support the next. It can be resistance one minute, it can be support the next. So you basically have to go off your levels based on what price is telling you it's gonna do. So this level right here, we can say this level right now is a support, right? Because we have this line up here, which is a resistance. Down here would be support. But but we have price that bounced around down here too. So this level that was once a resistance, I'm sorry, was once a support, is now a resistance. So you have to look at the market like that. Let the candle bodies tell you where to put your lines and how you're going to react to the market based on what price is telling you it wants to do. So let's do some more lines there, okay? I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys, but I just don't want this video to be too long um, because it's not a very advanced topic. Now, um, if I put a line, let's say down here, right? You might say, well, Charlene, why would you put it there? Why don't I put it up here? Why not put it up here? We have more reaction. I'm putting it more down here because if you look, support and resistance levels, you can't just go off just support and resistance levels. You have to also go by what the candle bodies are telling you, what the wicks are telling you. When you have areas like this where you see, that's not what I wanted. When you see, you know, long wick rejections like this, like this, you know, like this like this and this area, you basically have to ask yourself, why is the candle wick doing that? You know, why was one was priced once down here, but it rejected and closed back up inside? You have to tell yourself, what does that mean? That means that this price level doesn't want to be broken. That means that this price level needs to be respected because price keeps trying to break and it can't. As you can see here, price came down, rejected, came back up, came down again, rejected, came back up, came down again, rejected, and then shot back up. And this level did not break for days. We're on a daily time frame. So we can look here. We can say this is a matter of weeks that price tried to break through here and it couldn't. Did the same thing here. Couldn't do it. Broke down again. Couldn't do it. Finally broke through, came back up to retest, and then finally tanked. Completely just tanked all the way down. Usually when you have a price level that's been holding for a long amount of time, expect a big move. Expect some sort of breakout. Expect something that's like, okay, we've been holding on to this for so long. That pressure to just release is going to be super strong. So 
Look for that when you see a strong area that's been holding for a long time. And if it breaks, understand that after your retest, more than likely, it can just come down. Now, based on whatever pair you're using, the pair may not retest. It may, the pressure to break through could be so strong that it doesn't make any retest at all. It just continues to come to just tank, okay? So in this case here, price range, 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 finally broke through, came down, and then came back up. And then it, where's my handy dandy uh, clips here? And then it retested. Now this wick rejection here is very telling, okay? Why is it telling, Charlene? It's telling because, first of all, it's your retest. And second of all, it was once bullish. It was all the way up here, meaning price tried to come back up. It tried to come back up and not go down. And then it made a hard rejection and then just completely tanked all the way down. And then look what price did. If you look closely, I'll zoom in some more here so you guys can see better. If you look closely, price came all the way down and then closed all the way back up for it to make that retest and then for it to continue down. So can we say this is somewhat of a fake out and such? Not so much because it is on the daily time frame. This is one daily candle. But if you look, look at how all these baby candles were forming. Baby, baby, baby. And finally, it busted through and then came down right after it retested at the top here. Okay. So if you would have got in on this trade and wrote it down, you probably would have came back up into drawdown before you went back down into profit. But it's all depending on how you um, test, how you plan to trade out and what kind of trader you are. Are you scalping? Are you intraday? Or are you more swinging the trade? All right. So on this situation here, um, it's very, it, this is a great example, a great example of price holding. Okay. A lot of reaction, strong rejection areas and price is breaking up. Now this is now was once a, what a support, right? It was holding price. And then price finally broke through once price broke through and it came up to test it, to test this area and price held the retest. Now this area that was once a support has now turned into a resistance. Okay. Price, air, price levels that are once support turn resistance or vice versa are very important price levels. You have to pay attention to those price levels because at one point it was a support, right? Price was trying to break through, trying to break, trying to break through, and it couldn't break through. Finally, when it did break through, it tried to come back up at that same price level. It tried to bust to come back up, and it couldn't. So on one hand, it tried to break through, and it couldn't. On the other hand, it tried to break up and it couldn't. So what does that tell you? That tells you that that price level, whenever price comes back to that level, I had better pay attention. I had better look for some sort of reaction um, be, because if not, you're going to miss out on a trade. You're going to miss out on a setup and you're going to miscalculate what you think the market is going to do if you don't do that. Okay. Now let's extend on this example right here. All right. So this example here, we said this price level was important, right? So if we look here, we'll see that what happened. When price finally came down, rejected, had a strong rejection, nice big wick rejection, and then shot back up, what did it do? It did a dance around this level. It completely busted through. It completely busted through and it never retested. Never came back to retest this level. It just cr cr continued making higher highs and higher lows and then busted through and came down. Usually another uh, great um, gem here for you guys, whenever price um, has a hard time breaking a certain level and then it comes back to that specific level It's either going to range at that level or it's probably going to break right on through and just keep on going Will it retest will it not retest that I can't tell you depends on the period trading the volume the session You know so many different variables come into play with that, but with you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, rule of thumb is if you have a price level that has had a difficult time breaking a certain level it's going to react strongly at that level it's either going to range or it's going to break through very rarely will you see price just kind of come and dance a little bit and, and then go up it's usually going to do something at that price level because price is always looking left when it looks left it's saying okay I'm looking left, what did price do when it was in this area before? It was ranging in this area, ranging and holding, 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 holding. Will it look this far left? I don't know. But price was holding for so long, came up to retest, tried to break back up, it couldn't. So price said, you know what? When we come back here, we're not playing. We're not gonna play with this level. We're gonna either just shoot right on through or we're gonna range or we might even just reject. Price might say, no, 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 you're not going up. You tried that before. We're not playing with you today. Take your butt back down, okay? But in this case, it said not. Nah, we're just coming guns blazing and we're just gonna bust through. In this case, it just busted through, okay? Now looking at this example, and this is a great, great price area right here because we have a rejection here, ranging, small ranging right here, multiple rejection areas. But if we look further left, guys, look what we have here. 
Look what look at this. A strong rejection wick. Another rejection in this area. Another one, an even stronger rejection than before. So you can look left as far as you want to to find out how important is that price level. You know, was there a lot of reaction? Was there strong reaction there? Look left. Looking left is your best, best friend in identifying support and resistance areas because the more reaction you have in an area, the more rejections you have in a certain area, the stronger that price level is and the more attention you need to pay to it when price comes to that price point, okay? So support and resistance is really not a complicated issue. Um, it, it does come naturally to some people who are, who are able to read charts properly, but with some, it does take time, but it's not impossible. The only difference with support and resistance is when you're navigating from time frame to time frame. Okay. Now, if we drop down a time frame here and go, let's say to the four hour time frame, look how different the market looks. It looks very, very different, right? The levels change. Um, the, your, your reaction areas look different. Um, I'm trying to just take some of this stuff off here really quickly. So this thing can be a little cleaner for you guys. Okay, your reaction levels change some. Now you have to streamline your chart, right? Because once on the daily time frame, you had a resistance up here where price made a high, right? But when you when you drop it down to a lower time frame, now price is, is, is above, is above your line. So now you're like, well, wait a minute. If price goes above here, what do I do? You know, do I stay with where I'm at? Do I continue down? Because this box right here, these these may these are candles right here on the lower time frame, but on the daily time frame, this is these are just wicks. These are nothing but wicks right here. So you got to ask yourself, well, do I think price is going to come up to the wick, or do I think it's going to reject and come back down? Is it going to retest a high that it made or come back down? So breaking down your support and resistance levels time frame to time frame is also a challenge, but it just comes with experience and chart time. Okay. So what I like to do is when I do my markups for my charting, I like to streamline it. So as I start from time frame to time frame, I'll go off and I'll label what I have. So I may probably make this blue for daily. And then for my four hour um, support and resistance levels, I might put my level kind of like somewhere right here, right? Where I had some more reaction over here. And I might change this color. I might make it, you know, let's make it orange, right? Because it's a different time frame. So that way I know when price comes here, what price, what um, time frame am I on? You know, I usually take my entries on my 15 minute or my 30 minute. Um, but I always pay attention to my to my levels based off of my more higher time frame levels because high time frame Time frames are the higher confirmation levels that you want to always pay attention to. All right. So coming down some more, let's, let's do some more levels here. Okay. So let's move this level. We're going to streamline it some more. Now this level was down here before, right? And this was on the daily time frame. So I would probably label this and I, I might even leave it there, right? Because if prices, let's say we're looking at the chart from right now, let's say we're doing a markup right now. Price is kind of dangling in this area here. We're only what? 26 pips away from this last daily level. So I might want to leave this here, keep it labeled, and I have it blue, so blue from my daily, okay? And if price comes up to retest this high that it made here, can it come back up to, to break this level and then just look left and continue up? Or is it going to reject this daily level and come back down? Because what did we say? Higher time frame is king. So this might come up here on a four hour time frame, but this is a daily resistance. It may not hold because it's a daily level and you're looking at it on a four hour time frame. Okay. Vice versa. If you're looking at it on a, on a, on a one hour time frame and this is a four hour level, you want to respect it the same way. Okay. So, um, I'm going to keep the video short. This is pretty much how you identify support and resistance as you find the areas that have the most level of, you know, reaction, most level of rejection. You want to pay attention to those areas and mark them off, label off your areas as much as you can put, um, if you don't want to use lines, I recommend you use lines, but when you get to a point where you don't want to use lines, or you don't have to use lines, so you need to streamline it some more, I would go over to using more zones. So I have my zones here. Okay, guys, so uh, I got interrupted just now. So going back to um, the zones here, okay? So if you're not, if you're using zones as opposed to um, lines for support and resistance, you pretty much use them in the same way, okay? use You put your zones in an average of where you th you see price reacting off of okay so if i were to put my zones here all right i had a resistance turn support here i have you know a lot of reaction you know in this area here reaction reaction you know a whole bunch of reaction here right prices is ranging here okay and then down here on my support 
more reaction, you know, some more wick rejections, wick rejection, strong wick rejection at the bottom here. So I know these are important price levels, all right? So basically, price just range inside this area, this support down here and this resistance up here, and it was an average. So you can use zones or you can use lines. It, it really boils down to your preference, okay? So basically, if you look inside here, you'll see price broke in and out of this zone here, this box here, okay? Until it finally broke up and then continue and shot out of the box, okay? So basically... You can use lines or you can use zones, however, which way it works for you. But the important part is identifying where your important price levels are and understanding where price is going to react off of those levels. OK, so I don't want to make this video any more longer. Um, I hope you guys found value in the video. If you liked it, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, my course link and my Instagram, all my information is down low in the description box below. I have plenty more videos that show my trading plan, that show my style of trading, how I'm able to be um, as good as I am on these charts. And I show a little bit of what I do. And if you like my content, please come back again. And I appreciate you guys for watching. And I will see you guys on the next trade. Thank you guys for watching.